From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Tuesday, September 22nd. I'm Wayne Pratt. Many teachers who started their careers this fall have only met students over the computer. That poses challenges for less experienced educators. How do we teach all of this new information that we just learned in a remote online setting? We will hear from first year teachers and how they are dealing with education during the pandemic in just a few minutes. The White House Coronavirus Task Force is recommending Missouri issue a statewide mask mandate due to an increase in infections. But Governor Mike Parson says he has no plans to do so. The task force says Missouri has the fourth highest rate of new cases in the country, and its positivity rate is seventh highest. Parson cites a high recovery rate as his reason for not following the mask recommendation. Over the 100,000 people have been tested positive. How many of them have recovered? Well, over 90,000. I mean, there's a lot to the story to say just besides that positive number. St. Louis County had the highest total of new cases in the state last week. Missouri's new case rate over that same period is nearly twice the national average. The Madison County Circuit Court heard hundreds of eviction cases despite a continued statewide moratorium on the proceedings. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker banned eviction filings in April. Since Pritzker's April 23rd order, Madison County has accepted nearly 200 new eviction filings. Some of those cases have even ended with judgments against tenants, ordering them to pay thousands in back rent in addition to being evicted. That's what happened to Charles Hill. The Wood River resident received an eviction summons in June. It was embarrassing, you know, to be evicted because of a a world crisis. You know, my job put me on leave for the safety of me and my children. I'm evicted for that. Hill filed a motion contesting the eviction order against him, which will be decided next month. Madison County Chief Judge Bill Mudge says Pritzker's ban only prohibits eviction orders from being executed, not that it stops the courts from accepting new filings. I'm Eric Schmidt, St. Louis Public Radio. Five voting rights organizations are suing Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft over how ballots are handled. The legal action calls for the court to change rules about how absentee and mail-in ballots must be requested and submitted for the November election. Missouri Voter Protection Coalition General Counsel Denise Lieberman says the state's vote-by-mail system was flawed in the August elections. By setting up two different kinds of remote voting options that have different rules, some of which are more restrictive than others, and it's incredibly confusing. Secretary Ashcroft's office could not be reached for comment when this story was being put together. The suit will be considered in the U.S. District Court for the Western Division in Missouri. Missouri Governor Mike Parson has signed a bill to remove residency requirements for St. Louis Metropolitan Police officers. The department is dealing with a shortage of more than 140 officers. The measure will expire by 2023 if city voters do not approve a residency requirement ballot item later this year. This has been a back-to-school season like no other, and that makes this school year even more challenging for new teachers. St. Louis Public Radio asked two first-year teachers to record their experiences and share them with us. Hi everyone, my name is Claire Long and I will be teaching um, a special education resource room for kindergarten through second grade specializing in math, English, reading, and writing. My name is Zachary Udell, and I am a first-year teacher in the St. Louis Public School District. I will be teaching fourth grade at Frugal Literacy Academy. Everyone has said to me, well, this is the best and the worst year that you could possibly be a first-year teacher, and I would have to agree. Tomorrow is our official first day of school. I mean, for the first day, I will be happy if I can get my students on, and I can do roll call. How do we teach all of this new information that we just learned in a remote online setting with very young children? I'm feeling ready, I'm prepared um, for, you know, whatever awaits us. It is Tuesday, uh, September 1st already somehow. just got done with the second day of the school year. 
Um, and actually, you know, it's gone, I think, smoother than I expected. It, it, it's a struggle this week, I'm not going to lie. It, it's been exciting. There have been some highs and uh, I would say more lows than highs, but we're still, I feel like every day, I'm taking another step backwards, but I'm also learning so much more to make it worth that step backwards to move two steps forward. If anything, what I was not as prepared for was uh, providing them with more to do. I've got to say it's pretty exhausting to be able to keep everything together. I feel like I am not fully doing my job because I'm being stretched so thin some days. Sometimes I feel like I am doing way more than enough, and other times I feel like I'm not doing enough. One question that I'm still kind of um, looking at and kind of getting anxious over is the district plan is to go back to in-school learning at the end of October. Um, I'm kind of worried about that. Hi everyone, it's Claire. Um, it's Monday night about six o'clock after our first day this week back at school and I just got done eating dinner with my family and I have to say I'm in a pretty good mood today. I uh, really feel like I got a lot done and I feel pretty prepared for this week. What I'm most stressed about, oh, I don't even know if I can list all the things. Um, what was most stressing me Two days ago was getting my lesson plans in for next week. I have to have those submitted by Thursdays. Now I did spend about seven hours of my day yesterday getting things ready and catching up on this past week, but I feel like I'm a lot more organized this week. All right, it's now the end of the second week of the 2020 school year. It's a Friday and I'm very thankful for that Friday. Hi everyone, happy Friday. There has been quite a lot that's happened in these last two weeks. What am I looking forward to the rest of the fall? I want to believe that we'll go back to in-person learning. Last week we were basically told that we will be going back to school. I hope that's what happens, I'm not sure. No one can really know the future. It's kind of like when they come back, we're starting the first day of school all over again, except we're a month into school. I tell my students each day, it's going to be a little bit easier. It'll be quite interesting, but I'm super excited. And yeah, we're gonna do our best to get through it. First year teachers Claire Long and Zach Udell. Their diaries were produced by St. Louis Public Radio's Ryan Delaney. Maria Altman edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.